Hello, so today's yoga is a little bit slower, but it's also going to have a warm up in the beginning, straight into the warm up to make sure our bodies are supple and flexible before we go into the <clears throat> each individual asana. It's loosely based on an Ashtanga practice where we're holding a pose for five breaths. And there'll be a standing section and a seated section. So um, point to note before we start is your legs don't have to be straight in these poses. And I will remind you of that. Second of all, you don't have to do a full chaturanga or vinyasa in between each move. If you are feeling a little bit more lethargic today, then it's absolutely fine to just center back to that breath in between the poses instead of keeping that heart rate up with the movement. So without further ado, let's do, let's start. So we're going to start with centering ourselves, breathing. I want you to just come to a space on your mat, bring your feet together, your ankles together, your knees together. Tuck that tailbone under, drawing the belly in, drawing the pelvic floor up, that thunder, drawing up. Roll the shoulders to the ears, down your back. Pick up the toes, spread them wide, place each toe down on the mat. Bring your hands into prayer, close the mouth. Close the eyes and begin to not only slowing the breath down, but working out your balance, your imprint on the sole of your feet. So maybe taking this opportunity to lean forwards, lean back side to side, so you can really acknowledge that imprint on your mat. Breathing there, preparing and transitioning into our yoga practice. Feel the chest rise on the thumbs as you inhale and deflate on the exhale. The elbows are relaxed and into your side. And just set the intention of really exploring the poses and seeing how the poses feel today. And maybe a slight bit of Sanskrit, just floating it in. Don't get worried, I'm not about to chant just yet. That might be another class. Gently opening those eyes and coming into our Tadasana. So that's standing mountain pose, bringing those hands down to the side, slightly spreading the fingers, being really tall with that piece of string, pulling us out the top of the head. And let's begin with Suryara Namaskara A, some salutation A, coming through five times. So I'm going to start with knees, chest, chin to really warm up my body. Inhale. Exhale, fold. Let the head go. Inhale, rise, flat back. Exhale, step those feet back, bringing down the knees, the chest, the chin, coming into your cobra. Exhale, back into your downward dog. Five breaths here. Taking that time, just keep the breath going, slowing it down. Looking up at your hands, either step, jump, or walk those feet forward. So I'm choosing to step. Inhale, raise. Exhale, fold. 
engage the glutes as you bring yourself all the way back up. Hands in prayer, down your chest. Second round, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, rise. Exhale, stepping back. Knees, chest, chin or chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Breathe. Drawing that belly in. Sticking your tailbone out. Inhale, look up at your hands, step forwards. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rising all the way up. Exhale, prayer. Let's go for three. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale as you rise. Exhale as you come back to that plank. Knees, chest, chin. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Five breaths. Looking up, coming forward as you inhale. Exhale. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands down in prayer. Coming to number four. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, five breaths. So really trying to link a movement either, either with the inhale or the exhale. So as you're transitioning today, think about am I inhaling, am I coming up or forwards? Am I exhaling? Am I coming back or down? One more breath here. Inhale, coming forwards. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, hands to prayer. Last one for Surya Namaskara A. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Two, three, you should notice your the legs are feeling a little bit longer, a little bit more loose. Inhale, looking up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rising all the way up. Exhale, hands down. You might already be getting a little bit warm, like myself. So just removing a layer perhaps before we come into our Sun Salutation B, Surya Namaskara B. So feet together, engage those glutes. Drop down as you exhale. Inhale, rise those arms up, chair pose, squeeze those knees together. Exhale, fold. 
Inhale, rise. Exhale, stepping back, coming through that vinyasa into your up dog and down dog. This time, step your left foot slightly forward, bring your right foot through your hands. Inhale, rising up into that high lunge, bending that left knee. Exhale down through your knees, knees chest, chin on Chaturanga. Inhale. Exhale, step the right foot slightly forward, left all the way forward in between your hands. Inhale, rise. Exhale down. And through that vinyasa. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Breathe. You'll notice your heart rate picks up a little bit. We're strengthening. It's a tiny bit of cardio as well as we move through a little bit faster to those various asanas. Inhale, looking forward. Step your feet forward, feet together. Squat that bottom down. Raise the arms up into chair. Look up. Inhale, rise up, hands to prayer. Breathe. Then we'll do that twice more. Exhale, bring those hands down to touch the mat, squat down. Inhale, rise up into chair, squeeze the bum, squeeze the knees, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, stepping back, knees just chin or chaturanga. Inhale to your back bends. Exhale, down dog. Step that right foot to the front, maybe stepping that left foot a little bit. Coming up into that high lunge as you inhale. Exhale. Lowering down. Inhale as you come up. Exhale as you come into the down dog. Left foot forwards. Inhale, rise. Exhale, come down. Coming through. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. Five breaths. Always. An option in the down dog to come into a child's pose as well. To take your five breaths if you'd like. A slightly gentler practice. It's still a powerful practice, but we're taking this asana more as a resting pose rather than an active down dog. Meeting back in down dog if you're in child's pose. Coming forward to the front of your mats. Exhale, fold, bend those knees, lift those arms up into your chair. And into prayer, standing. Lovely, one more time. My mat's moving, I'm just going to adjust my mats. You might want to do the same as we move around on our mat. On the carpet, it can move. Exhale, fingertips down, squat down. Inhale, rise to your chair. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, stepping back, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Exhale, coming back. Right foot forward, high lunge as you inhale. Exhale, coming down. Inhale, your back bend. Exhale, down dog. Left foot forward. Inhale, high lunge. Exhale, coming down. Knees, chest, chin. Inhale, up. Exhale, back, down dog, or your child's pose. Breathe. 
take your time. Regulating your breath, regulating your body's responses. You'll notice <laughs> me not doing any chaturangas currently or coming flat onto the mat. That's, I'm growing a human and that's my pregnancy adjustments. But you are more than welcome to come through a stronger practice of chaturanga and your full up dog. Inhale, stepping forwards. Feet together, knees together, squat that bottom down. Inhale the arms up to your chair. Breathe. And coming all the way up. Lovely, take a moment. Centre. Bring your hands to your hips. Hop the feet apart, hip distance. Inhale, squeeze those shoulder blades together, looking up. Exhale, forward fold at the waist. Releasing the hands, take those two fingers around your big toe. Inhale, you lengthen. And as you exhale and fold, bring your elbows up to the side, bring your head down. Draw your fingers into the mat by pressing your big toe into them and then pull with your fingers. A little bit like a tug of war. Breathing here for three, two, and one. Inhale, rise. Release your fingers, bring them to your waist, slight bend in the knee, pause on the exhale. Inhale, rise all the way up and step those feet together. We're coming into Trikonasana. Raise the right knee high. Step out long lengthways on your mat. Your left leg is straight with your left foot pointing to the mat currently. I'm going to bring your hands to your waist Turn that left foot in, so both feet are facing forwards. Then turn that right foot out. So we've switched direction of our feet, not our hips. They're still facing forwards. Inhale, raise the arms parallel to the mat. Exhale, lean over that right leg. Palms face forward. Hinge at the hips. Your right hand just fingertip and rest on that left, that right calf or thigh if that's feeling too much for you today. Looking up at that left hand for two, three, four, and five. Inhale, coming all the way up, lovely. Hands to your waist. Turn your hips to face forwards. Step that left foot in and on a diagonal, switch those hips forwards. Pavottanasana, squeeze those shoulder blades together. And then on the exhale, fold. Release the hands to the mat. Fingertips, or you can have blocks here. Or hands fully to the mat. Exhale, allow that body to lower. If you get any pain in your hamstring here, bend that right knee. It doesn't have to be fully straight. Work on your back being straight so we're not rounded and crunching down. We've got length there. Breathing there. For three, two, and one, inhale, looking forwards. Left hand to the outside of that right foot, right hand to your hip, and work on twisting here. So I'm just introducing this with a slight twist, looking over your right shoulder to the ceiling. If you feel comfortable, you can raise that right arm up, but, it really challenges your balance, so go slow. 
Return both hands to frame that foot. Slight bend in that right knee. Bring your hands to your waist. Inhale, coming all the way up. Let's turn those feet in. Your left foot out. And then let's repeat on the left side. So my feet have narrowed a little bit there. So we're just going to make sure our alignment is still okay. For some reason my computer just wanted to update. Let's have a look where we are. For some reason, my computer is not behaving itself. There we are. Sorry about that. So we were on the left side. So coming into that trikonasana on the left side first, so our left foot facing forward, our right is parallel to the back of the mat. Raise those arms up parallel, palms face forward. Exhale, lean over that left leg, hinge at the hips, resting those left fingertips loosely so we're not dumping here, we're just resting They've made contact with that left leg, looking up at that right hand. Breathe. Two more breaths here. Inhale, rising up. Hands to your hips. Let's turn those hips forward, stepping that right foot in a little bit, so we're really aligned forwards. Exhale, fold over that left leg. Release the hands, again, you can bend that knee slightly if there is any resistance there, any pain in that hamstring. Lengthen forward, so with that straight spine. Exhale, fold. Breathing there. Four, three, two, and one. Inhaling, rising our body up. Bring that right hand to the outside of the left foot, left hand to your hip, and begin turning your body over to that left side. Switching the gaze if your balance allows. Maybe lifting that left hand as well. Breathing there. Three, two, and one. Returning that hand down, frame the foot. Inhaling, bringing those hands to your hips as you rise up. Turning those feet in. Breathe. And let's widen those feet a little bit more for wide-legged forward folds. Squeeze the shoulder blades together as you inhale. Exhale, fold forwards. Grip the mat with your toes. Bringing your hands down, press into those hands, flat back, looking forwards. Breathe. And then exhale, fold. Lovely. You might want to walk those hands back a little bit in between your feet. Breathing there. Really nice. Inhale, coming onto fingertips, rise that body up. Slight bend in the knee. Bring your hands to your hips. Inhale, coming all the way up. This time, take your arms up to the side. Clasp your hands behind your back. Keep the spine straight so we're not curving. Squeeze those shoulder blades together to open that chest. 
Inhale, gazing up. And as you exhale, forward fold again, taking those hands off your lower back. Squeezing those palms together, lowering the head, gripping the mat with your toes. Breathing there for three, two, and one. Inhaling, rising all the way up. Release those hands, roll those shoulders. Lovely, lovely. Hands to your waist. Press into that right knee to step forward to the front of the mat. Walk out those feet. We're going to come through a sun salutation to Virabhadrasana 1 and Virabhadrasana 2, also known as Warrior 1 and 2. Inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, stepping back. Knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga into your back bend, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward dog. Bring your left foot into the middle of the mat, raise your right leg high, step that right leg forward in between your hands. Turn your left foot on a diagonal, toes facing out, heel in. Inhale, rising those arms up. Bending in that right knee, Virabhadrasana one. Breathing there for three, two, One, inhale, lengthening that right leg. Keep your gaze up. Pivot on the right heel and the left heel to turn yourself to the back of your mat. Bending that left knee. So we're in warrior one, facing the back of the mat on the left side. You are in five breaths in each of these poses. The reason I can down from three to one is because I appreciate I've been talking and that's usually around two breaths. This one's probably a little bit longer. Lengthen in that left leg. Heel toe that right foot back a little bit further. Bring your arms down parallel to the mat. Bend back in that left knee for warrior two. Pressing that right foot away from you. I've just noticed my alignment's off, so I've stepped my right foot back. Your heel, your left heel, should be in line with your right heel for warrior two. Your left knee above your left ankle, your arms super straight and strong. We're not kind of Broken umbrella arms here. They are really drawing the energy out of your body. Let's come onto that on the right side. So let's lengthen in that left leg. Pivot the left foot to face the back. Pivot the right foot to face the front. Sorry, I should have said side. <laughs> right foot facing the front. Bend that right knee. Warrior two on the right side. Just an alignment cue here. Make sure you're not dumping in your lower back here, that your tailbone is tucking under as much as you can. Your right knee might want to sneak in when it's doing that. So draw that right knee on top of that right ankle, but that tailbone is pushing down and under. Breathing there. Let's windmill those hands down to frame that right foot. Step that right foot back. Knees, chest, chin. Inhale for your back bend. Exhale into your downward dog. Breathing there. Five. Four. Three. 
two, and one. I want you to bend your knees, hop in the air, crossing your ankles and coming down to seated. So it looks a little bit like this. Obviously you'll do it more delicately than I have. So coming down into our seated practice now, you're lengthways on your mat, but I'm sideways so you can see what I'm doing. If you have really tight hamstrings here, you can have a cushion underneath your bottom to create kind of a ramp which allows your legs to be uh, straighter with your tight hamstrings, or you can slightly bend those knees and bring a support underneath the knees. So coming into Dandasana, roll those shoulders up, shoulders up to your ears, down your back, flex your toes towards your face, bring your hands either side of your hips, lightly pressing into the floor, squeeze those shoulder blades together, bring that tummy in, breathe. You might be flexing your feet so much that your heels lift off the floor. Three, two, and one, and release. Notice how active that posture is if you're doing it properly. Paschimottanasana, inhale, raise those arms up. Exhale, forward fold. So we'll start. Um, on alignment first, before we go deep into the pose. So imagine someone pulling you by your tie, you're leading with that chest, you're squeezing your shoulder blades together and you're closing the gap between your belly and your thigh. Granted, it's a little bit easier with my growing belly. However, even without a belly, you're working on kind of folding a piece of paper rather than that curve. So if you imagine that with your body as your gaze is to your big toes, you're leaning forwards, breathing there. Three, two, and one. Inhale, coming up and release. So, if that was really challenging for you, repeat that version. A second option for those of you that are a little bit looser in your hamstrings and your calves is to come with me for Pavottanasana B. Inhale, raising those arms up. And as you exhale, you're hooking those two big fingers, those two fingers around your big toe. You inhale to lengthen the spine there. And as you exhale, you're folding, bringing those elbows out to the side and your gaze is down at your shin. So you're not curving that neck vertebrae. You've got a really straight spine right from the base of your head all the way to your coccyx. Breathing there. Inhaling, rising up, release, coming into the reverse, the counter pose of that, Pavottanasana or reverse plank. So we'll do it two different ways. We will start with bent knees, bring your fingertips behind you, underneath your shoulders, your fingertips facing forward, your palms printed down. Squeeze those shoulder blades together. Feet are hip distance apart. Inhale, press into those heels. Squeeze your bottom to lift those hips. Gaze up at the ceiling for five, four, three, two, and one. Coming down. The other option for that. You can either repeat that or come into full pervotanasana where your legs are straight. We will hold that for three breaths. Pointing your toes, squeezing those shoulder blades, 
Squeeze your bottom. Inhale, raise those hips. Lift, lift, lift for three, two, and one. Coming down. Option here to come through a vinyasa. So we cross our legs, bring our hands forward. Not essential. Feet back, coming through. Inhale. Down dog as you exhale. And then hopping yourself back to seated. Not essential. Bringing your legs forward again. We're going to come into Janusirasana. So bringing your right leg forward, sorry, bent into your hip. Notice there's a gap between my left thigh and my right heel. So let's grow tall, first of all. Bring that right knee down. The right foot comes to the inside of the left leg. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, fold over that right leg. Gazing at the toe. Breathe. Really nice stretch. Really try and turn yourself over that left leg. Inhale, coming up. Option to come into that vinyasa. I'm skipping this one out. If you come through that quick vinyasa, we're going to meet on the opposite side. So drawing that left heel in with a gap, first of all, really think about lengthening the spine as you're sitting. Let that left knee come out to the side, draw that left sole of the foot into the right thigh. Inhale, we rise up. Exhale, we fold. Breathing there. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Inhaling, rising up. Cross those legs, either coming into child's pose or come through that vinyasa, resetting. Meeting back in that cross-legged. And we're coming into a pose called Gomya Kanasana. Gomu Kanasana. Bring that right leg over the top of the left and swing that left leg underneath. So your knees are stacked, your feet are out to the sides. Find your alignment first of all. Breathe and grow taller. Take your arms out to the side. Your right arm up, draw that right elbow behind your head. You can either stay here, or if you can find your right hand behind your back with your left hand, cow face pose. Either staying here or to deepen that stretch, we lean forwards and we're here for five, four, three, two and one release either coming into your vinyasana vinyasa or you can lean backwards like myself switch those legs over so this time that um your legs are forward that left leg is over the top and you bring that right round underneath you so you should feel a little bit tighter than the other side as we just stretch the other side your knees are stacked grow taller bring your left elbow above your head draw it behind your back stretching those triceps and shoulders either staying there we'll find that right hand to touch your fingers maybe join your fingers you can grab your t-shirt behind your back as well. We inhale to lengthen and exhale, slightly folding deeper, finding that stretch going right into that left glute med and maybe that glute max. 
Breathing there. Hmm. Lovely, that face. Inhale, release those shoulders. Release those legs. Come into your vinyasa. Chaturanga on knees, chest, chin. Really great way to keep the heart rate up, keep the body moving, resetting those muscles. And then coming forwards and back down, Baddha Konasana. Bring the soles of your feet together. Take your ankles or your soles of your feet and butterfly those knees. Breathing there. Perhaps coming into stillness, either your hands behind your back, like I love to teach, squeezing those shoulder blades and leaning forward if you're not compromising the straightness of your spine. You can follow me, bringing your feet forward and coming, your hands forward, sorry, not your feet forwards, and bending forwards deeper. Breathing there. Five. Four, three, two, and one. Inhaling, rising up. Either taking your vinyasa there or follow me, extending your legs out for a seated wide leg forward fold. I just adjusted there to find my sitting bones and get that tilt forwards. Your feet are towards the ceiling. Either bringing your hands back behind you, squeezing those shoulder blades, or bringing those hands forwards. Walking those hands forwards. Coming to your edge. Your edge will be different from my edge. This is currently my edge. You may be here. That's okay. Your body may be flat on the floor in front of you. That's more than okay. Very flexible. Kind of more than an average range of motion is what physios would call that. Breathing there. So the next pose we're coming into is, you'll be familiar, is called Pigeon, or in Sanskrit is Ekapada Raja Kapatasana. Say that after a few drinks. <laughs> Walking your hands up, closing your legs, coming through that vinyasa. If everyone could come through that vinyasa, it'd be helpful for our pigeon pose. Coming down as you exhale, inhale your back bends, Exhale your downward dog. Bring your right knee to your right wrist. Left knee comes down, sliding back. So either staying here in your pigeon for five breaths, coming onto your forearms, or perhaps bringing those arms all the way forwards. Try and bring that right hip back, your left hip forward. I quite like to. Rock side to side in this pose. It's a really nice pose to use your weight to extend that stretch on your right hip. Breathing there. Inhale, walking those hands back up to your knees. You can have a strap here if you can't reach the foot, but if you can, bend that left knee, take your left hand back behind you to find that left foot, and draw that left foot in, until you feel that quad stretch. I can feel the quad stretch already, so I'm gonna stay here, but be my guest to draw that heel further in. If you get cramp here, quite common, just bring that foot back, Bring the toes down and release that cramp. Your shoulders are facing forwards. 
your hips facing forwards. Breathing there. And release. And then coming into that downward dog, stepping out those feet. Let's bring that left knee forward to our left wrist, right leg down, slide that right leg back, pigeon on your left side so you can stay with your hands resting, your forearms resting, or maybe coming, maybe coming all the way down to lay down on your front, on your mat. Breathing there. And bringing those hands up, bring that left hand on the inside of that left knee, bend that right knee. Right hand comes to find that right foot, drawing that right foot in. I'm a little bit more flexible on this side. So that heel could be drawn further in. Hips facing forward, shoulders facing forwards. Breathing. And then release that foot, bringing those hands down, stepping back to your downward dog, coming through a chaturanga if you wish. Breathing, allowing that body to register all the lovely stretches. Inhale. Coming up, bend those knees, cross those legs, come down to seated. And then coming all the way onto your back. Hug those knees in first of all. Gentle rock side to side. Lovely. And then we're going to come into our back bend before our relaxation. So bring those feet down, feet hip distance apart. So you can touch them with your fingers if you should try. And this is the beginnings of wheel. So first of all, palms on the mat. Press into the heels as you inhale, peel that spine off the mat, squeezing your glutes, lifting those hips high. Five, four, three, two, and one. Bringing your body back down. Draw those knees into your chest, rock side to side. And then bring your heels down again. So you can repeat that or you can follow me. So this time as we inhale, squeezing those glutes, pressing into those heels to lift ourselves up. I'm finding my hands in a clasp underneath me, rocking my shoulders side to side to bring those shoulders underneath, allowing a little bit more space. Breathing there. Three. Two. And one, releasing down, bringing those knees into your chest, rocking side to side. So it's always good to counter poses of extreme bending. So we've bent our back one way. You could move on from that. Now you've got a nice warm spine to bring your hands, palms by your shoulders, pressing into your heels to come up into a wheel pose. With caution, you require a lot of arm strength for that. So that would be the add-on here. But to counter the wheel, the back bends that we've done, the bridge, we're going to start by bringing our hands underneath our bottom and lifting our feet up to the ceiling. 
So this is the beginnings of plough. You don't need to be in plough to create this inversion. And if you were near a wall, you could have your feet, your heels resting against a wall in this pose. If you want to extend further, you press into those hands to bring those feet up and over the top of your head into your plough. And again, you can squeeze the hands together, wriggle those shoulders under. But for me right now, I'm just going to slowly roll my spine back down using my hands as a break. Bend my knees, bring my knees back into my chest. But you can stay in that plow as long as feels comfortable. Really important to not turn your head in any of those poses we've just done. So that bridge or plow. Let's return those feet to the mat. Lengthen them all the way down to the end. Press into your elbows to squeeze those shoulder blades underneath you. Bring your hands down to the mat, to the ground. Palms are facing up. Turn your head side to side. Relax your jaw. Breathe. And come into your well-earned Shavasana. Relaxing your heavy body into the mat. And keep your focus here. Maybe run through in your head the sequence of poses that we have completed today, the sequence of asanas. Some stronger poses, some stronger transitions today, um, and a small introduction to what Ashtanga is like. So just as you're in your Shavasana, perhaps running through and acknowledging what you did today. Well done. Enjoy the rest of your relaxation. Stay there as long as you'd like. Namaste.